Hello everyone, again we are back with the next book in the Ra Royal Ranger, Ranger's Apprentice series and we got Escape from Falaise. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, correct me in the comments if I am. So, we got Will and Maddie trapped in a tower. They were trapped in the dungeon for a couple days and then when they went back they found a tower room completely locked with smooth smooth edges so they can't climb out. And they're trapped in there and the Baron is slowly and surely trying to make sure and get them on his side. And he is, again, preparing also for a invasion of Aralowin as well if and when he becomes king in his mind. And it's not great. And Halt and Horus is meanwhile outside preparing for a assault to rescue Will and Maddie. And they're kind of preparing everything. Meanwhile, Will and Maddie inside is trying to kind of play the Baron's game. Pretend they're slowly getting close to him and then slowly reveal a little bit of information and then freaking with him. However, Maddie is a little bit of an impatient and headstrong girl like her mother before Cassandra. And she goes in and she dares one of the arrogant pimply pricky knights of the Baron to a duel with blunted edges. And Everyone is worried and the Baron agrees because he's a little, he's, 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 but he expects this little girl to kind of get the, beat the crap out of. So he's fine with that. He wants to see her humiliated. Meanwhile, Will is super duper worried. And then Maddie beats the crap out of him. And because of that, the Baron gets really, really, really mad and asks and says that he will execute both Rangers in like, Four days or five days I, I'm not sure about the exact date in a couple days and Halt and Horus hearing that immediately rest readies a rescue mission and there Halt actually throws up this like cord thing up like on, a, on an arrow on onto the tower and we find out this is a telephone reference so you know one of those uh, one of those things where I think everyone has done that at that point, one point right you you got a paper cup you put in uh, a string and you pu pu pull a little hole in the end of the paper cup and you put a string in it and you tape it or tie it there somehow and you put another paper cup at the other end of the string and you do the exact same thing and if you keep the paper if you keep the string between the paper cups tight you can speak into it and listen with the paper cup and that is the exact same thing that that they do they use this medieval telephony thing to communicate to with each other and they make up a plan to escape and they do manage to escape after that however maddie wants to take a risk he thinks that they should go back and get the prince and the baron should not be expecting it at all and he's absolutely right and after horace being a little bit angry at her for you know wanting to risk herself again will and maddie they each they agree on it and maddie goes and manages to rescue prince and get out however she is chased by baron lozini who has his men and his sword out and he's a formidable warrior however he stopped before they, he can come in and hit maddie or kill maddie or whatever uh horace comes up and he reveals his emblem and he says i am the oak leaf knight of aralua and i am the champion of the queen and he readies a fight, and he and the dude's like, oh, oh god, I, I don't want to fight him. But he fights him, he loses, and Horus kind of takes control of the situation. And then they go back to the king, they give the prince back, and they run out of the country as fast as they can because it's riddled with holes. And they find out Prince Louis, who is uh, the brother of the king, who is, has betrayed the king, and he gets executed as well. Amazing. It's a terrible country. They get it out of there. And that's pretty much the end of the skip from Valais. Now, the points. I loved a lot of the fight scenes in this because they were just innately satisfying. For example, the knight versus Maddie part that was really, really, really satisfying. There's a nice little callback where Halt said, Will, Will, when, when Will and Horus were still younger and one still fighting, Will said he would do the exact same thing with Horus. I wonder if he told Maddie. And that's that's just a really really awesome point because um, it it really calls back and really shows that uh, mentor and uh, mentee relationship apprentice relationship it's pretty 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 awesome and it makes you good feel good inside and of course the fight between Horus and the Baron was also super super satisfying where Horus pulls out his godly swordsmanship skills and beats the crap out of the Baron which is really really satisfying. But I got to say that these satisfying moments felt a little bit artificial. 
like like the knight and the baron felt like rather very flat characters they didn't feel we didn't feel like we were fighting someone and the fight really mattered. Like, we already knew what would happen to some extent because, of course, the main characters would probably win. But in order for a scene to be more satisfying, we want to know some of the motivations of the Baron, some of the psychology, a little bit more, a little more dash of it would have made the scene a lot more satisfying. For example, in one of my favorite webtoons called Alexeed, there is a scene where um, the, the main character gets tortured by the bad guys and his mentor, Kaiden, comes in and beats the crap out of the guy who sold his apprentice out. And, is a, and, and, and again, it is a very similar, similar situation, right? It is, um, Maddie gets kidnapped by the Baron, Maddie escapes, the Baron comes out to chase Maddie, and Maddie's dad, Horus, who is angry at this Baron for obvious reasons, beat the crap out of the Baron. It's a very similar plotline, but um, Alexei, the webtoon, was far more satisfying. And this is not, in fact, because Alexei is excellently drawn, and obviously a comic book is sometimes more, more entertaining than a book. Actually, I disagree. I, I like both equally because, you know, books have a charm to them that comic books don't, and comic books have a charm that books don't. But the point that I'm trying to make is what Alexei does much, much, much better than this uh, Raider Rangers Apprentice is that they build up the villain and what the the horrible things they do to the main characters or or what what the evil things they do they make that really really strong they make that they make that that evilness really impact us the readers and they make sure that that when when the time comes and he's acting like a like a a-hole for the entirety of the webtoon series and then finally uh, the mentor comes in and beats the crap out of him and it's really really satisfying because of the way he speaks the way he acts and of course the fact that it's been built up over a long period of time and they know that a novel is a lot more limited than perhaps an extended webtoon series however i think that a book it has its strengths of a medium it has the general atmosphere it can Describe the general atmosphere, the vibe of the person. It can it can make you make you feel what kind of person that is without drawing pictures of the person's expressions. We can we can say, oh, he the, the person felt like a a predator staring into into my soul, ready to devour me at any second. Like we can that was a really bad example, but you get my point. We can describe the feeling, the vibe of the person. We can build up the evilness or why the reason why the main character needs to take this guy down. It felt artificial because it never really felt like the main character's lives were on the line at all. It just felt like it just felt like we were going in and beating up a bunch of noobs, honestly. And it, it didn't it didn't feel that tension because it didn't really ever feel like they were in danger in any way. And and I think that um, that's the problem with the past two books. Like it's good, it's well paced, it's well written in many ways. It's rather direct with help with the action scenes, and it's quite satisfying in a lot of the scenes. However, we don't have that life life-threatening details we don't have that feeling that the main character is really throwing themselves in there and fighting for their lives and and or or the evilness of the villain and what they're doing is truly truly disgusting and bad and then the main character comes in and beats the crap out and that's where the satisfaction should come from but instead here it just feels like we got this flat 2d character whose only motivation is ambition which we don't even get to see most of just get to be get the crap beat out of um, Horus. And if Horus wasn't an established character who we haven't seen with the sword in a while, then this entire this entire scene wouldn't have had even half the impact. And it could have been done a lot, a lot better. For example, in the Emperor of Nihon Jia, there is we have that we get that innate satisfaction, that the life threatening, that those impossible odds, that they're all there. The feeling of the hero fighting against the entirety of the world with his wits, skills, and smarts. That is what the Rangers Apprentice is known for. Fighting impossible odds with smarts, wits, and strategies. But this this just felt like this didn't really feel like that. It just felt like we go in there and we're just stronger just 
force wise than these idiots over here so we just shoot them and we sword them beat the crap out of them and it's done and it didn't feel half as satisfying as it used to when we thwart the enemy with an excellent plan or or in for example again I, I'm talking about the Emperor of Nihonja multiple times but like in the Emperor of Nihonja where they they fight the the katana people army and we have we have the common people with with the Roman style fighting, with the with the shields and the large javelins, and we use plan-ish fighting to fight off our impossible odds. We use strategies, we use our brains. That's what the Rangers of Princess is so satisfying and so amazing. But I felt like some of that feeling was missing from the past two books that I have read. And that is my only comment. And otherwise the book was really, really well paced, the action scenes were good, like I said, they're innately satisfying, and it was a pretty, pretty good read. And again, even though I am critiquing it like this, I gotta say, it is an excellent, excellent book that you must, must read. It really brings you through a story and just grabs you with the pacing. It is a great, great, great book. I can't emphasize that enough. However, like I said, there's just some points that could be better. And like always, your plot coaster and the plot coaster have a great day, everybody. Highly recommend the entire series and good.